Last week, NASCAR announced that the first ever street race was being held in Chicago next year. However, this isn't exactly true. NASCAR's Southwest Tour Series ran a street race for three years in Los Angeles, but no one seems to remember this, and it was only two decades ago. From 1998 to 2000, the Southwest Tour raced just outside of the LA Coliseum. Today, we're going to be taking a look into the final edition of the race in 2000. Right before the video starts, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe for more. Anyways, let's get right into the race. Greg Persley started on the pole with a couple other notable names throughout the field. Boris Said was starting from 5th, while championship leader Matt Crafton started back in 17th. The 36 car field was ready to go for 125 laps at the notably short 1 mile street course. Now, let's get into the race. Now he holds it high and lets it fly. We're underway in LA. Field pours into turn one. Persley led the field to green and jumped out to the early lead. The field kept it surprisingly clean through the first section of the track. The final portion of the track was this tantalizing paperclip section which consisted of two 180 degree turns. Jim Inglebright was the man in second, but falling away slowly but surely off the back of Pursley. Both of these drivers made a career in NASCAR's regional series, although Pursley was the only one to ever become a champion, winning the K&N West Championships in 2011 and 2014. A lap later on lap 4, NASCAR threw the caution for debris on the track in turn 1. On the restart, Borsett was able to snag 3rd place up 2 places early on. Inglebright was not letting Persley pull away like he did in the opening laps and was all over the back of him. Over a commercial break, the caution was thrown on lap 14 for two stalled cars on the track. The pit road reporter asked Persley's crew how he was able to be so dominant, to which they replied that they were racing one of Kurt Busch's car from 1999. Busch won the 1999 championship by a landslide. Once again, the top two were nose to tell on the restart. The caution was thrown on the restart, but they could still race back to the line. John Sarotsky brought out the caution for hitting the wall on the outside of turn 1 and dropping debris throughout the track. Something pretty cool under caution was Clint Curry, who was driving the number 85 car, got out of his car to help his lone crew member repair suspension damage. On the restart, Inglebright was on the back of Persley yet again, but this time he had Boris said behind him. The top two pulled ahead of set over the next five laps, and then finally there was a true battle for the lead. That was turn seven, here comes turn eight. And they get right to follow the tire tracks and lose a couple of car lengths. Now he's going to add a problem for the leader. Coming off the corner, there's the change for the lead at lap 31. Coming off the final corner, Inglebright was finally able to get by. Scott Lynch got spun around in one of the tightest points of the track, but luckily everyone avoided him. Later on the same lap, Fernando Sterling, a Mexican driver, spun out and made contact with the tire barrier as well. A handful of laps later, the caution was out once again. This time it was for Fernando Sterling, who had spun again. He was a Formula Ford and Formula Atlantic driver making a one-off start in the Southwest Tour. A replay of what happened to Fernando Sterling. Gets punched once, and this is coming into turn two. Brandon's, uh, Fernando Fernando Sterling there. not making it out on the other side. Under caution, Vic Rice also found the tire barrier. Just seconds later, there was a huge problem in the pits with Bob Lyon's car catching on fire. Unfortunately, there weren't any replays of these incidents under caution, but it must have been utter chaos at the track. Boris had pitted under caution, so he was out of the picture for the moment. Persley was all over the back of Inglebright this restart, much like the restarts before, just the other way around. These two also had a heated battle a few weeks before at Sonoma. On that occasion, it was Inglebright who came out with the win. The next lap, the caution was out once again for the fifth time for Frank Moronsky Jr. This time on the restart, Persley wasn't able to keep up with Inglebright and pitted at the end of the lap. This was a scheduled call, so why would he do this whenever they were under caution just one lap ago? Well, they had a rule in this race where you could only do a two-tire pit stop under caution, but could change all four tires during a green flag stop. 
It was so hard to pass, Persley's team thought he would have a better shot putting on four fresh tires and running against time, rather than trying to drive through the pack on two fresh tires, which he would have had to do if he pitted under caution. At this time, they spoke to Vic Rice's car owner to tell us how he ended up in the tire barrier under caution. So then how did the steering go out? Well, we uh, we knew we had a full course caution, but unfortunately uh, there's a rule that's unusual for road racing that they decided to race back to the yellow. Uh, not race back to the yellow, it was a gentleman's agreement that uh, you would hold your position, but somebody tried to go under me in one of the uh, hairpins and I had nowhere to go and he just drilled me. Meanwhile up front, Jim Inglebright had checked out. Big time. He held a 16 second lead at this point, mainly due to the rest of the top 5 pitting, but still he was on a ridiculous pace. As he was starting to catch some lap traffic, there was a caution. Jim came to the pits under caution and had an interesting take on the rule. Instead of taking left or right side tires, he made the call to take two rear tires. During his pit stop, his front brakes caught on fire, resulting in a pretty sizable one. The dominant driver of the day was now done for good. Climbing from the car, Jim just had to laugh at his unfortunate luck. Eric Holmes was the new leader, and for some reason the broadcast was under commercial for the restart. The caution was back out though, for a fire on the track. That's a new one. The gas tank was overfilled, and sparks from the exhaust set off the fire. As previously mentioned, Eric Holmes was the leader and he led on this restart as well. Behind him was a name we haven't heard all day and that was Craig Rodman. Rodman wasn't always competing full time, but whenever he was in a southwest race he was competing for top fives and wins. He was all over the back of Holmes before the caution came out for the eighth time. Augie Vidovich made hard contact with the outside wall of turn one. Augie was a young gun at only 19 years old. He made a splash in the Southwest Tour, winning four races in 2000, finishing second in points in 2000 and 2001, and won the championship in 2002. He wanted to reach the Truck Series or Bush Series in the coming years, but didn't have a real shot until 2006, running 21 races in the Bush Series, and unfortunately never got another chance. On lap 74, the green flag was back out and Rodman was immediately all over Holmes. Ross Thompson was wrecked in the final turn, while Rodman made the pass for the lead. The gentleman's agreement to not pass in the race back to the line had been completely thrown out the window. Also, there was a dog that ran across the track and was able to make it out of harm's way before any cars passed by it. Once again, the broadcast didn't show the restart. Not much happened as Rodman was 5 car lengths ahead of Holmes. The next lap, the caution was out for a stack up in the paperclip section. Unfortunately, Jeff Hill's car stalled and couldn't get refired. Rodman maintained the lead on the restart, but Holmes was still pretty close to him after the first lap. Really close. Behind them in third was Greg Persley, who had made a great comeback after his pitch strategy. Front of us is we're just trying to save our stuff till the end. Well, that has to bode well for you then. Uh, yes, it does. We're pretty happy. And is it easier to stay out of trouble up there in the front like that? They were three wide in the paper clip, which caused Persley to lose some time. But Holmes was looking for the lead and nearly turned Rodman in turn two after he had a quick lockup. After a couple of laps, Craig Rodman was able to start to gap Eric Holmes while he was being pressured by Persley. Just behind them was Boris Said, who was the fastest man on the track. The next lap, Persley had noticeably dropped back and came into pit road. On the exit of turn 4, he had made hard contact with the wall. In a stall, chunks of concrete were dropping and being pulled out of the side of his car by his crew from the contact. He was done for the day. Meanwhile, Rodman's lead was slowly disappearing as Holmes was catching him and even made a tiny bit of contact again in turn 2. Eric Holmes had been around the regional series for 6 years ever since he was 19, but had never won a NASCAR race. He tried to move on the outside of turn 2, but couldn't get by. Boris said dropped off a cliff and fell 7 seconds back. A couple laps later, the caution was out for Clint Curry. Also, Boris said's tire randomly flew off as the caution came out. It looked like a next-gen single lug wheel coming off, super odd. Rodman got a really good jump on the restart, while Holmes was under pressure from Matt Crafton. After a lap, the top 3 were starting to spread out. 
About six laps later, the caution was out after Rodman opened a huge lead. Carson Woods brought out the caution, and once again, there wasn't a replay of any incident. What a shame this race didn't have a modern day broadcast, because this was an absolutely crazy race, but unfortunately, there were just not many camera shots or replays of all the incidents. Anyways, the field came back to green for the final time with about 10 laps to go. Holmes drove into turn 1 over his head and nearly lost second to Crafton. While these two started to battle, Rodman was cruising away out front. During a commercial break, Crafton got by Holmes and was about 1.5 seconds behind the leader. Crafton was the series points leader and ended up winning the championship in 2000 despite only winning twice, thanks to his incredible 7.8 average finish, the best by any other full-time driver by nearly three places. Unfortunately, there would be no late drama and Craig Rodman would score his seventh career win. There was a bad wreck with Fernando Sterling on the last lap as well. Don't feel too bad for Eric Holmes though, who lost out on his first career win as he would compete for championships the rest of his career, becoming a three-time K&N West Series championship and winning 26 NASCAR Regional Series races. Rodman, on the other hand, got a full-time ride for the 2001 season and scored his first championship in his 14th year of competition. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope you did enjoy. I honestly didn't know about this race until pretty recently, and it was super fun to dive into. If you did enjoy, make sure you leave a like and subscribe so you never miss a video, and let me know what race I should do next. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.